I wouldn't be doing that. You just like, let's see them kind of hike right in there. Just give them another shell when I wanted you to see that. I don't want to get too sloppy. But that's that height, the difference between them. The radius is just a distance x. I just want to label it. And this is just an x. But that height right there was height x minus x squared. Top minus bottom. Cool. Any questions on that? Excellent. So uh, this method, uh, these dimensional shell method, so when you're revolving it around any arbitrary axis, are you just subtracting sort of uh, that from the radius? That's exactly what you do. Very good. Very good. And in what other questions before we go into six section six point four? Cool. Hey, section six point four, it's a section we'll work on today. We even work on it tomorrow, just because all the scenarios change in each one. The title is just one word, it's work. And some of you take physics, you might be very familiar with work. But the title of section six point four is work. Hey, does anybody know what work is? Force times something? I already heard it. Someone knows. The work is force times distance. Work is force times distance. The title is 6.4. Work. Can't get wasted. Work. But work is force times distance, right? If the force is constant. If the force is constant. The scenarios we're dealing with, everyone, is pumping water out of a swimming pool, right? Or some kind of cylindrical, uh, just some, it could be some kind of cylindrical tank that we're pumping water out of. Maybe a rectangular prism that's a tank. Maybe we're trying to pull a rope up, up the side of a building. And so the force acting on different parts of this very heavy rope is changing, right? It's varying. And so, work equals force times distance. Sure. If this force is what? Just a constant force. You know, I, look, I lift a book off the ground, everyone. The book weighs 10 pounds. It's a really heavy book. But I lift it off the ground, and you're like, well, that force is always going to be that 10 pounds, right? All right. Force times distance. Then what's the formula if the... What we need in terms of calculus, if the force is changing, the force is varying. All right. So I'm going to start out with another notation. I think it's good to write it this way first. I'm going to have to take the limit of the summation of, I'll just use I equals 1 to n. Some force function, f of x, I'll say x of i, and I'll put a star here. You don't have to put the star. But I put x of i because we're going to think about breaking this up into just an infinite amount of small parts, whether if it's a rope or slices of water in a tank. And then I'm going to have to multiply it times uh, the change in x. It turns the change in x would be the distance x. Okay, that'll work. F of x sub i times change of x, infinite sum, right? Limit as n approaches what? Infinity. But that's one notation. What do we use? We use integrals, so let's come write this a little smoother. It's just the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Ah, oh, that looks way better. <laughs> that looks way better. True? We're just saying this would be it. You know, and this is going to be work. So in front of all this, I'll just say, hey, this will find one. I'm just saying, you're going to notice, though, when we build pictures, I don't care if you always think of it this way, but you'll notice we'll build a picture just to see what one little part would look like, and then we'll sum all of them up, just like I made that one shell. Maybe I made a picture of just one shell. And as long as you see one shell, then you can think about it summing up all those shells. But we'll do the same thing with work. Okay. The only thing is, it's like 
this is the kind of lesson, you know, you can do as much as you can in one day, but still continue with the next day. Because we're going to look at springs, you know, the work necessary to you know, stretch a spring a certain distance, ropes being pulled up, water being pumped out of tanks, etc. Okay? Hey, so the first one I think we'll start with. Let's start with a spring. And by the way, I probably should write this. What if the force is constant? Work is just what? Force times distance, true? But I'm going to put the word constant. This is what's happening when your force is changing. All right, and when there's a, we're going to deal with springs. There is a law called Hooke's Law. Does anybody know Hooke's Law? All right. Well, I'll write the problem down, but to work with the problem with the springs, that one, we do have to be familiar with Hooke's Law. It's mentioned in the textbook in section 6.4. I'll gladly tell you Hooke's Law, but it deals with springs. But the problem we're going to work, and when I want to do a problem like number 7 out of the textbook on page 450, so I'm going to do one like this, number 7. Page 450. I mean, this is in 6.4. Do is change the. I think I'll change the force. I'm gonna use force of 20 pounds. All right, here we go. I want a force of 20 pounds. And LB abbreviation for pounds, right? 20 pounds is required to hold a spring. Stretched four inches. Okay. Here. How much work is done in stretching it? from its natural length to six inches beyond its natural length. And if you didn't want to copy all this, you would just say, hey, you throw a problem like number seven. I just changed it. There's 10 pounds. I use 20 I did think it was important. I put all these words on the board so you know how to read this question, see exactly what we're trying to find. This does deal with the spring, though, right? So when you're trying to find work done, as in this case, <coughs> and when we definitely have to use Cook's Law. All right, well, what's Cook's Law? I'll read it to you, and then I'll write it on the board. We're going to have to work something off to the side before we start the problem. This is all we're going to do, right? That's the force function. But we need Hooke's law to figure out this force function. We got to figure out what's called the spring constant. So, do you want to hear Hooke's law? All right. Hooke's law is the force applied to a spring is proportional to the distance that the spring is stretched beyond its natural length. I should say that. This is just Hooke's law. All right. Hooke's law. The force applied to a spring, you see that letter K? That's called the spring constant or the constant of proportion. Right? The force applied to a spring is proportional to the distance that the spring is stretched beyond its natural length. If you wanted to know what page it's on in the book, I'll read it again. Just because you're like, what's the law again? And when it's written on page 447 in our textbook, Hooke's Law is mentioned. But we need to work the problem, or any problem in this section that deals with the spring. So say it again, you go, what's Hooke's Law? The force applied to a spring is proportional to the distance that the spring is stretched beyond its natural length. So when we work this problem, or any problem in section 6.4 with springs, our first step is to find that spring constant. Okay? I'm talking, let's not do an interval yet. Let's focus on that K. This spring constant, the constant of proportion, 
changes with different springs, right? There's thick springs, there's springs that aren't so thick, etc. So we've got to find them. So let's go over here on what was the force they mentioned? 20 pounds, okay, 20 LV. I don't know K, but what was the distance that got stretched beyond its natural length? Right? Let's look. A force of 20 pounds is required to hold a spring stretch 4 inches. There it is. So I'm going to put the 4 inches here, right? Now here's what I encourage you to do. These problems, we're going to either write everything in either newton meters or foot pounds. Let me say that again with work. All our work problems, our solutions, if we're in metric, we're going to put our answer in terms of newton meters, which is actually joules. Does anybody know that? The newton meters are actually joules. But if everything's in the U.S. customary units, which is pounds and feet, we're going to put our answers in foot pounds. Well, that's not in feet, is it? So I highly recommend it. When we just start the problem, have everything in terms of feet. Four inches. What is that in terms of foot? Because there's 12 inches in a foot. It's a third. Is that a third of a foot? And I'm going to change it right now. I recommend doing it right at the beginning. This is one third of a foot. Because in the end, we want to have everything in terms of foot pounds. If it was in the metric system, if they gave us stuff in meters, we'll get everything in the, the joule, which is new meters. All right. Anywhere else I have inches written on the board, I'll change it. Right there. And when this changes, what would that be? One half of a foot. Or you can put 0 0.5. I just recommend that. I know you're like, can I wait later, do that later? I'm like, I might forget. I think it's easy to get that right at the end. So for this x value, Hooke's Law, 20 pounds, 20 LB, equals K times how many feet? One third of a foot. What is K? And I know you all can solve that. This is step one to deal with the spring break. We've got to find K. What's the spring count? Six. And I'll just go like that. We found the spring constant for this problem. For this spring? Because when I was number, this is like number seven. I bet you number eight in the book, there's like three or four spring problems. You know, the spring constant is going to change from spring to spring, true? Cool. Hey, by the way, so what's my formula that applies to the spring? I can write it right now. It is now F equals what number? 60X. Cool. Question? Is that the final answer? No. Great question, though. I know it's funny. We did all that work. We're like, are we done? Because at some point, we're going to have to do an integral, aren't we? But we did something important. We have to do this with springs. we got to do this at the beginning. Especially with this problem, we had to determine the spring constant associated with the spring. But they have to give you information on that, right? They have to give you information on that. Does the spring constant have any units? Is it uh, no, it's, it's unitless. Very good, good question. It's just a constant. It's just a number. Well, this has units, pounds. This has units, feet. Foot pounds is what we'll get for our final answer. But that K is just unitless. Just a constant. But now, this is brilliant. We found the formula for f of x. What is f of x at for this problem? 60x. We found this. And that's my point. This problem's going to be easy. Set up an integral. What's the force function? 60. That's your f of x. That's the force function. That's that spring function for this spring. dx. But now, what are these? Look at the question. Read the next sentence. How far are we stretching? beyond its natural length. Natural length is what value? Zero, but how far beyond its natural length? Six inches. Now I'm going to put that, is that right? No. Thank you, because I just didn't want you to make this mistake. Whoops. Wait, what is this now? One half. One half. Half a foot, right? So when we do all this math, our final answer will be in what units? Foot pounds. F-T-L-B-S, right? Or you can just put F-T-L-B. Well, let's see what we get. Of all the angles we've done today, this definitely looks like the easiest. <laughs> do you agree? But I had to do that off to the side. So hey, once we did that, we're almost done. Now we integrate this. What's 60 times integral 60x? x squared over 2 or 30x squared. I heard it. What's the limits? What's a half squared? A fourth? In my units, you can reduce this if you want to. Ft dash lb, or 15 over what? 15 over 2 reduced, ft lb. If you're a decimal person, that is 7.5 what? 
foot pounds. That's the work necessary to stretch the spring that far. But we did have to use an integral to find that answer. Hey, great job. Just remember one thing. When it comes to dealing with the spring whip work, the spring scenario, you definitely have to find the what first. The spring constant. And it's just something you do off to the side, right? And it's like, I've got to find that before I know what the force function is that I'm dealing with. So we say natural length is zero. Yes, natural length is zero. Always. Always. Natural length zero. So in this problem, they wrote this look. Natural length. And I do want to point out, remember Hooke's law? Hooke's law was this distance right here was always beyond its natural length. So when you dealt with this, if they try to they use wording in the word problem that's confusing, just go wait a minute. Hooke's law to find that constant. The force applied to the spring is always proportional to the distance stretched beyond its natural length. Wait a minute, that's super. That's the spring, right? You know, what's next? Well, let's look at like a rope. Okay? When I'm stick, let's put a rope on the side of a building. Um, what's the weight of this rope they used? 